so this is essentially my last one just because we shared the Palo one. But this is my last one. We might share this one. I have no idea. But it is simply Jonathan Isaac. So we do not. Jonathan, but I like it. Oh, good. So Jonathan Isaac is is really a huge indicator of how this team will be next year, in my opinion. Like, if this team is a play-in team, I think it absolutely is going to require that J.I. is at least close to the defender that he was and a little bit better offensively, right? Like, so allows him to lose a step defensively just because he's been out for so long and with the ACL and everything, that's that's fine. J.I. could afford to lose a little bit defensively. He's he's a great defender. And so if he can make just a jump offensively, then, you know, even slightly, I think, you know, I think that he is a huge key for this team this year. Something that's kind of flying under the radar in terms of the fact that, like, you have talked about it. We're operating under the assumption that J.I. isn't J.I., that he isn't where he left off and that he isn't where he was pre-injury all or pre this most recent injury, right? Like, the, you know, that that is a huge key for me. Jonathan Isaac, I really do think that it, a lot of it does hinge on him, maybe more than Magic fans are willing to admit this season. Yeah, I think he's going to be a big part of it. You know, like you said, if he comes back and he's the same defender, if if you're telling me we're going to get Jonathan Isaac for even 60 games this year, and you tell me he's going to be every bit the defender that he was before, you know, the first injury, this team at its worst should be a top five defensive team with the personnel that we have and adding a defensive player of the year candidate like Jonathan Isaac. And if you're a top five defensive team, that almost guarantees you that you are in the playoffs. So, but like we've said time and time again, at this point, just given the history, the amount of time that he has been out, you do have to operate like he is just an added bonus. I don't think it would be responsible of the Magic front office to operate as if 2019 Jonathan Isaac is coming back opening night of 2022. You, you just, as much as I love the guy, you won't find a bigger Jonathan Isaac fan than yours truly. It that just kind of is what it is at this point. Um, the offensive game, it, it, I think, is going to be um, like the big question, right? Like if he if he can't come back and, and be the same defensively. My guess is he probably will not be better offensively because if he's not the same guy defensively, some of it is going to be just kind of like the mental processing of things. I think that's going to take some time, but that's something that I think, you know, 30, 40 games in, he might be able to kind of shake off and kind of get back to form. But if he is like very much lost a step just from all of the time being out, that's where I'm going to be kind of more concerned. I think his anticipation, he's still going to have like the physical attributes, you know, the the length and the height and everything like that. His timing is probably still going to be there at some point. But if he just can't really move the same that he was, like Terrence Ross a few years ago said, he's like a giraffe that moves like a lion. And if he has lost that kind of lyoraph ability that he once had, um, I don't see him being the same player now. What they say, have, say, you know, about guys coming off of their ACLs is usually you're not 100% back until you've been back, like really back for an entire year, and it's that second season that you really feel like you're really you know back to full strength and everything like that. So, Jonathan Isaac uh, is really, I think we both agree, is like the X factor for this team. Without him, still a very good core is in place. But if Jonathan Isaac comes back and is the defensive player of the year candidate again, like this team is really set to compete in the next two, three, four years here. 